Hello guys and welcome to another Benchwork um, episode. Um, a series where I talk about uh, fountain pens, um, building part for fountain pens, making fountain pens, and whatever else it's related uh, regarding fountain pens and working on them or repairing them or doing things regarding fountain pens. I have a few updates regarding the uh, recorder and the uh, Mont Blanc 320 that I've been working on. Uh, starting with the recorder fountain pen, which is uh, a lever filler uh, vintage fountain pen, I think I oops, I still need it. I think I am done with this project, and um, I will call it a success. I did had a few adventures since last time I was uh, talking about it, so I don't know. As a quick recap, I've rebuilt the section basically using. Um, 3D printing and uh, I built this part for it and uh, well I did some quick tests to make sure that uh, you know it holds water and all that and then uh, I've been waiting for the uh, sack replacement for, for the fountain pen. I received the sacks, I got three of them fortunately. Uh, <laughs> I got three of them and uh, one of them was destroyed in the process. So what happened is I uh, mounted the sacking, I installed everything on the pen and uh, inked it up. Everything was very great, uh, working perfectly. I was extremely happy and uh, just I was about to call it um, a, a success. Uh, this part fell on me. Uh, basically what happened, it started to have like a small crack around this area. Uh, at first I thought it was just ink and then I, uh, I washed it away and then I realized that the crack uh, was getting actually uh, bigger and bigger with time. And uh, I thought that maybe it was a misprint, something happened with it and I was a little bit ticked off but not a big deal. So I washed it uh, and then I was waiting for it to dry, air dry on the counter. I left it for a couple of hours. And then when I returned to it to look at it, I returned and saw this. A literally carnage. <laughs> the red ink didn't help it. I was, <laughs> uh, I mean, surprised, unpleasantly surprised and dumbfolded a little bit as to what the hell happened. And as such, I went back to the, these parts and I started doing more serious tests. So I put it in water for a day. And every single part that I uh, printed with this material uh, basically exploded in water. This basically, this resin is uh, water washable and apparently even after it's curing, uh, water can damage it if it sits for too long in, uh, in, the, in water. So lesson learned, I was not aware of that and took me by surprise. And I was a little bit disappointed because I actually liked, uh, liked this color. Such, I went ahead and started looking for other type of uh, resin that is more uh, resistant to water. And uh, yeah, there are a few of them. Stay away from water soluble or water uh, washable uh, solutions because those will pretty much dissolve in all water over time and since you're using uh, fountain pens with ink, ink contains water and other chemicals in it and uh, it will slowly damage the section. In the end though it turned out to be okay because I uh, got this um, new resin, black resin, that works very well with this fountain pen. It's very slightly translucent, but you won't be able to see it on this one, especially with the ink that I have. It's a red ink. And uh, it turned out that going black was a better choice. I also chose the right need in order to match the fountain pen better, and voila! I call this a success, in my opinion. This stuff is from the new ink that I'm trying. It's a Monteverde ink. And uh, for whatever reason, this ink does this. I never had an ink with this stuff before. And uh, I used a different ink in this pen before, and I did not have this issue. So I don't know what's going on with this ink. 
Um, but other than that, it's uh, it's what I would call a success. Just reaching out for some paper in here, just to show it off in action. It works very well. Maybe it's very wet, matches the pen so well, and I'm so happy with the end result. Uh, would you know if you wouldn't, uh, if I wouldn't tell you that this was printed and you haven't seen these videos? Would you, would you be able to tell it's not the original part? I was smelling it right now. You even got the smell from the cap, so it doesn't smell like resin. It actually smells like that. Uh, musky, old, but kind of pleasant uh, smell of, um, I don't even know how to call it. But uh, I mean, if you're into vintage pens, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. So I don't know, I call this a success. So number five nibs in lever, uh, modern number five nibs in modern, uh, in uh, old vintage fountain pens. And as um, basically was rebuilding the parts and reprinting for things, I did a couple of small modifications to the to the to the feeds. I mean, not the feeds, the sections. As you can see from this one, I actually curved a little bit more this part and uh, made it a little bit uh, thicker. If we look at the first parts that I've built, you'll see that it's a little bit pointier, but this one it's a little, it has a little bit more girth to it and a little bit rounded, but still with a flat end. And then I also did another one, similar style, with uh, a little bit of a bevel at the end, so it's not perfectly flat. It gives a little bit more character, I guess. I also have been playing to see if I can actually uh, sand them down and make them nice and smooth and yeah, it will work very well. Even this black one, you won't see the actual pattern. I mean, you will see a little bit of a pattern because I uh, I didn't went too crazy on it. I just wanted to see how well it works. And I actually like it like this because it reminds me of the older um, hard rubber fountain pens. And uh, I think it matches the pen quite nicely. It looks wear out and it looks like it's been through, through times. Perfect fit for me and for this pen. So as such, I'll make these two versions of the sections available uh, on my Thingiverse account as well. The one with bevel and the one with the flat end and just the rounded bits um, around here. Basically, I'm talking about those parts. Hold on, I can't point stuff. So this part here with the flat end and this with the bevel towards the end of it. So if you want to use them, they're both there and um, I, I was able to include the free CAD uh, versions as well. So again, you can modify them as you see fit, especially to make sure they fit in your uh, in your battle. Again, I strongly recommend to uh, only modify uh, the outside to fit your needs, especially this part that fits on the barrel, or this nipple in order to fit your uh, the sack that you're trying to, to fit in. Do not modify the sketch inside because you're gonna have issues with actually mounting the, the feet and the nib inside. It's sounding, it sounds down pretty nicely. And the good part about these, if you want, you can actually paint them in the colors you want. You have to use primer and then paint and then, I mean, whatever else you want in order to make it nice and different colors, which is good. Anyway, uh, going uh, away from this pen, other than that, the lever is pretty much the same. The only thing that I did was, uh, remember, I don't know if we ever watched it, uh, I was saying that you can cut off a little bit of uh, tin 
uh, foil or aluminium uh, and uh, add it on the lever basically sit here uh, so this way the lever won't damage the plastic I did that I actually did that and uh, I think it's a better call rather than leave it the, the plastic so you might want to do that um, another thing that I did to make sure to test it works why I usually don't uh, glue the barrels down on the on these fountain pens I did it this time because I want to make sure that the glue won't damage the, the section so I'll be keeping this fountain pen inked for at least two, three months and see uh, if there are any issues. If there are any issues, I'll do an update on it. If not, probably, fortunately, maybe for you, is <laughs> the last time you see this fountain pen. For now, I will call this a success. I'm loving it, basically. So, putting the recorder aside, the other pen that I've been working on was actually this pen. I didn't have much time on it, so as a reminder, what I've done on this one, I managed to uh, fix the sleeve, basically this part, that helps guide the piston up and down. I reprinted again because um, to use the new type of resin that I know water won't damage it, because I mean, if you wash it and all that, I don't want to think about it and remember later on. So I reprinted that and replaced it there. I kept the uh, ring the same it was, I didn't want to reprint it at this time. I doubt I'll ever sunk it in water, but if I do, I will we'll, uh, redo it again. That's not a big deal, that's a quick print. And, as you remember, if you've seen the, the last episode, uh, I had issues with this cap and my plan was to rebuild the cap. And... Ta-da! That's satisfying. <laughs> Love it. The cap is basically almost as the original one. The only thing is basically I incorporated the base. I didn't reuse that um, um, the ring that he had on it because the material would have been way too thin. Plus, you have to glue the ring on, and I was like, you know what, I'll just keep it simple uh, rather than have issues with the material breaking while printing and all that. Now, the clip and the finial, I haven't polished them and I haven't worked on them much. My first goal right now is just to rescue it and make it uh, working. Um, basically, I have the lip inside where this metal uh, clips... Um, are hanging into the cap and as you can hear works very nicely and there's no no wiggle it's perfect fit now the perfect fit contains this uh, it's uh, aligned with this um, ring this um, ink window right so I'm, I haven't tried it with the original one but I don't see actually you know what since I'm here and I hope I have it here Hold on, sorry about the noises. Okay, let me do a quick test. I won't transfer the, the spring. I will just do this to see if it actually fits. Yep, even with the original one, it seems to work fine. I don't think I, I don't see an issue. It'll be perfect. Cool. So, uh, from the quick test that I've done, it looks like it might be okay. And again, the cool part about this uh, material is obviously you can find any color you want. Again, keep in mind, do not use <laughs> the uh, water washable resins. Uh, use um, the one that says ABS-like and uh, non-water washable. And I did another example here where I tried to basically uh, sand it down and make it smooth and you can actually get a nice, uh, nice smooth surface. Now, if you go with the transparent bits, obviously it will be harder to sand down the interior and you can see it through, but depending on the orientation you print on, you might like the pattern it gives you. I don't know, up to you. Plus, depending on the colors you're using. I haven't printed it in black. Maybe I will at some point in time, 
but for now I'm happy with with this. The only thing left now, and that's the more complicated part that I'm still working on, is to actually um, rebuild the the feed. Remember from the last episode, the feed I was showing it is broken. I'm not gonna remove it now because it's gonna take a little bit of time, and I wanna cut down on time. Uh, so I started working on the feed, but that because of the very thin. Uh, uh, basically um, fins that he has it does create some issues um, so I'm still working on that I'm, that might take me another maybe month month and a half based on the time that I have until I hopefully finish it and be able to actually print a, a working feed and with that one I since um, it's gonna be always so soaked in ink and he has to hold ink very well um, I have to do some more serious tests to make sure that whatever is and I'll use it will actually uh, stand up to the um, to the ink and probably I'll have to test different inks and all that anyway these are the updates cap for the 320 it's also available on my uh, Thingiverse if you want to download it and print it again like I mentioned it's uh, free to use for everyone for personal use please don't just use it to make money out of it. At least get in touch with me and talk with me if anything. Uh, and that's it about the bench work part. Um, there's one more thing though. Um, recently I purchased this. This is a Sheffer lever fountain pen as well. I got a pretty decent deal out of it. It came without the nib and without the feed. I haven't done anything with it. I was just planning what to do with it. So things to watch for the future. I'm planning to make, to convert this um, into an eyedropper. Yes, you heard me right. I'm planning to make this an eyedropper. So that means I'm gonna have to remove this feed. I mean feed. <laughs> I'll have to remove this section and then uh, I have to be careful how to remove it so I don't break it because I still want to keep the original parts and then rebuild the section but I want to use a number six nib and feed specifically a Kaijalu uh, nib and feed so that's going to be interesting this is going to give me the section for number six uh, uh, nib as well um, Hard to see in here. I had something in here. Let's see if it works. Hold on. Sorry if I blind you. So, okay. Some, something in there. Something. No, it doesn't focus. Okay. There you go. So, the cap seems to be able to fit a number six. The way I see. I think I should be able to fit a number six uh, nib in there. So the idea is section for number six, feed and uh, nib. And instead of sack, I'm gonna actually continue with a tube inside. I've obviously printed in resin. And uh, I'll try and remove this lever, obviously without damaging it. Hopefully it has the ring that you can easily turn and pull out. By the bulge that I feel in here, most probably it does have a ring. Unfortunately, I won't know until I actually take it apart. So it's like a bulge right here. I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up. But right there, what is that small shade in there? And that's, that's hopefully, is the ring that I can remove it. And I want to make this as an ink window, basically. So I'll have to print the section with a built-in, basically, tube where you're gonna fill it with a syringe and uh, another piece in here to cover this hole that is gonna be transparent and hopefully you can see the ink inside if anything uh, you probably can use like a small light just to shine through and see what's the ink situation in there that means that I'll have to print this section and the entire thing that is going on here uh, from uh, clear resin so I'm going to have to search for something like that. Anyway, 
that's about it regarding the uh, parts that I've been building and the plans that I have uh, to do. And it feels like uh, every step it takes me just closer to being able to, to build my own fountain pen. And it's kind of exciting. I'm learning new things in the, ta in the meantime and uh, having fun as much as I can based on the time that I have. So, thank you for joining me. Um, I'll see you next time. When next time it will be, I'm not 100% sure. Hopefully soon. It's all about the time that I'll have. Um, cool. Again, thank you. Have a good day or night, wherever you are. And um, I'll see you next time. Bye.